Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. This video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research, make your own decisions. All right, guys, welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about ICP, Definity's voting power, centralization, decentralization, and everything in between. There's been a decent amount of back and forth about this over the last six to eight months, but I do want to have a more comprehensive conversation in this video because there's a lot of variables involved here that are important to the broader conversation. And too often, this the decentralization, centralization conversation gets you know, painted with a broad brush and in a very black and white manner, and something's either centralized or decentralized. There's no nuance. There's no consideration of design, of use case, of how it compares to existing technology that may be more centralized or decentralized. So there's just a lot of different things involved here that are worth discussing if you're going to have a genuine conversation about this. If you're going to have a disingenuous conversation about this, yes, you would just blanketly label something as centralized or decentralized with no nuance. But I want to cover this more thoroughly with more depth, and that's what I'm going to do in this video. Now, if I get anything wrong, please feel free to add that in the comment section below. Okay. So for starters, let's do a thought experiment. Let's assume that today, Definity does not have the majority vote or the super majority, whatever you wanna call it. Now, before I go any further, it's important to keep in mind where ICP's price is and where the market cap is. The reason why that's significant is if Definity does not have the majority vote, they would leave the door open for some other institution, large investor, or anyone to take the majority vote. What are some potential issues that could arise if Definity did not have the majority vote? Well, let's just say that their R&D team developed the Bitcoin integration and CKBTC and or future features and functionality that would enhance the user experience. So, and to that point, their R&D team and their team in general had a decent amount to do with my investment thesis and my long-term outlook on ICP. You know, if they wouldn't have had 260, 280, whatever it is, researchers and engineers, many of which came from IBM and Google, if that wouldn't have been their team, and instead they would have had a team of, let's say, 10 developers with mediocre, creden mediocre credentials, I would have probably assessed this differently. So their team themselves would really be neutralized if they did not have the majority vote or could be neutralized if they did not have the majority vote in the early years, okay? The, the, the phase and the general stage that we're in is important to this conversation. All right, so they create the Bitcoin integration, CKBTC, and then they submit the proposal to implement CKBTC. But an institution or large investor, some type of malicious actor, since Definity doesn't have the majority vote, they could take the majority vote and they could vote against the implementation of these features that would enhance the user experience. Now, why would somebody or an institution, why would they do that? Well, let's just say that they are seed investors in three other networks that they view as competitors to ICP. And if they could stunt ICP's growth over time, it would be a huge net benefit to the different networks that they're invested in because if those use cases, those applications, those users and developers aren't on ICP, they would realistically migrate to other networks and potentially the different networks that they were seed investors in. So that's a very realistic scenario. And if Definity did not have the majority vote right now, they would be leaving the door open to that happening. Now, whether or not it would or it wouldn't, I guess we don't know because this is just a thought experiment. It's a hypothetical example. All I'm saying is that that would be a realistic risk that would be front and center if they did not have the majority vote right now. Now, this plays back into the conversation about where the price and the market cap is right now, because let's just speaking hypothetically, if an institution were to look at doing something like that, they would do a cost benefit analysis and they would look at the risk reward. Well, right now, it's going to be as cheap as it's probably ever going to be to take the majority vote on ICP, assuming Definity does not have it. Five, six years from now, so let's just fast forward. Let's just play this all the way through. Five, six years from now, let's say the ICP's price is much higher, the market cap is much higher, and if somebody were to look at 
what it would cost them to take the majority vote compared to how they could benefit from taking the majority vote. They say, yeah, the numbers don't make sense here. One, we don't even have the available capital to be able to take the majority vote. But even if we did, we don't look, we don't see that there is enough benefit for us at this point in time, given how much we'd have to invest to take the majority vote. So the general stage that we're in and the price of ICP is very relevant to this conversation. All right. Oh, and also this could be just like a large tech company with endless amount of funds and they could see ICP as competition and they weigh the risk reward and they decide that, yeah, it makes sense to take the majority vote. Over time, it's going to be a big net benefit to us for the different technologies that we have a vested interest in. So I've also seen some people discrediting CKBTC and the Bitcoin integration because Defendi's voting power, and, you know, essentially suggesting that, well, you know, you can't really trust, you know, CKBTC or the Bitcoin integration, or you, you can't feel that good about it because at any point in time, Defendi can just decide to vote on whatever they can just vote to change it or vote to do something else. Okay, well, you could use this exact same reasoning to almost never invest in a publicly traded company, right? Because BlackRock and Vanguard have too much of a say on their corporate board and they could just decide to do whatever. You know, it, it's like as if, the people at Defendi are just going to wake up one day and decide to self-sabotage their own network that they've been working on for the better part of a decade and that they have a long-term roadmap for. So this gets back into you know people talking about all the things that could happen. Well, this example that I laid out to start, this is a realistic example that could happen. So yeah, you, you can sit here and talk all day. Well, Definity could just decide to vote to destroy everything. Yeah, that's entirely possible. You also have to look at incentives. Are there any incentives in the world for them to do that? And for the most part, that same general concept would apply to most of the other layer ones. So I think that if you look at where we are right now, in the early years, I don't see how you get around them having the majority voting power. If you want to see their long-term roadmap come to fruition. Now, over time, it would make sense why they could scale down their voting power. Because once the numbers change, once the price of ICP changes, and once the total amount of capital it would require to get the majority vote, once that goes up significantly over time, assuming that happens, nothing's ever a sure thing, um, it would change the risk reward. It would change the dynamics involved here. And theoretically, it would lower the risk of somebody deciding to take the majority vote because it would cost them so much more to be able to do so. All right. So for the people who virtue signal about decentralization, you know, I used to talk about this more than I do now, but, you know, I just have no interest in hearing people virtue signal about decentralization if, if they have no track record of being front and center on camera, on their channel, trying to inform as many people as possible as to what's going on here. Because the higher percentage of people who are informed in a general sense about all of this tech, what's going on with the implementation, what's going on with the new system, how this is the new system, the higher percentage of people that understand that, the more people who can advocate for policies that will benefit normal people. But as long as public awareness is as low as it is right now, there's little to no chance that normal people, there's enough of them that public awareness is high enough for them to be able to organize to advocate for policies that are going to benefit normal people in general. So if you're going to virtue signal about decentralization, you're doing things out of sequence. The first step for you should be, I'm going to inform as many people as I possibly can what's going on. here. So first, I'm going to do everything possible to raise public awareness. See, people don't want to do that step, right? People want to skip that step. They just want to go straight to virtue signaling about decentralization and letting everybody know how good of a person they are and how much they care about decentralization. But they want to skip the first part of that, where they actually honestly, openly tell people what's really going on with all this technology so that they're actually informed, so they can have a realistic conversation about centralization, decentralization. If somebody doesn't know there's a new system being implemented all over the world right now, having a conversation with them about centralization and decentralization, you're really just pissing in the wind. 
So again, I could care less what people have to say about centralization and decentralization if they have no track record of being front and center and informing as many people as possible as to what's going on with all this. All right, so ICP as a blank canvas, it will either go in the direction that Definity has laid out, or it will go in a completely unknown direction if a separate entity takes over the majority vote. And I like how people just assume that if Definity did not have the majority vote, that some other institution wouldn't arise that takes the majority vote. Everything sounds great in theory. And if you look at where the price is right now, later on, the risk will be lower for somebody taking the majority vote because the risk reward and the total capital needed will change significantly. Other things to consider. If there was no risk of an institution or an individual intentionally taking the majority vote, then I would be 100% cool with Definity not having the majority vote right now. Also, keep in mind, we do not live in a world where everybody has good intentions and tells the truth. If an institution or an individual can take advantage of a situation for their own benefit and do so legally, most of the time in my life, that's happened. All right. Much and a lot of times they'll do it even if it's illegal. Uh, much of my bet was on the Definity team and not on some random anonymous people on Twitter. At some point, even though, yes, I do agree, I would like to see Definity have less voting power over time. However, I understand the general stage that we're in right now, and I also understand the risks involved of them not having the majority vote right now. All right, so at some point, it's worth asking for people who spend a lot of time just bitching about certain things with certain technologies. It's, it's worth asking at some point, why haven't you gone somewhere else? You have so many issues with the way things are. Why don't you find something that aligns more with your interests? So, for example, you don't really ever hear me complaining or criticizing certain networks about different things, right? Their design, functionality, whatever it may be, uh, their governance. You never really hear me going on about that in any type of negative way with any technology in the space. Reason being is because if I look at a technology, I look at a company, I look at some foundation, whatever it is, and it doesn't align with my interests and what I want to see, I don't invest in them. And then I never fucking look into them ever again for the most part. I move on with my life and I go find things that do align with my interests. So it's worth asking at some point, you know, why haven't you gone somewhere else? There's tons of other blockchains. There's blockchains as far as the eye can see. It makes little to no sense spending excess time with a specific network that does not meet your expectations. Go find something else. And the spectrum. And, and that's not for me to say that, like, if you have, like, a criticism or some type of, you know, constructive feedback about something that you should just not not voice that and just go somewhere else. That, that, that's not the position that I'm taking. Um, the position I'm taking is more so like, this is the way things are, and you've said your piece, and things are still going to be this way because of all the things that I went over in the first part of this video. Um, and it just, it is what it is. So like, if, if it doesn't align with your expectations or what you want to see, that's perfectly fine. But like you going on and on and on and on about it every single day, every single week, it's like most people heard you the first time. And so at some point, you know, you kind of have to assess whether or not certain individuals are trying to have certain conversations in bad faith. OK, reading people's intention is a very difficult thing. Sometimes it's more difficult than others. But I would start trying to be able to identify when you think someone is trying to have a conversation in bad faith. Also, centralization, decentralization, it's a spectrum. And there's a lot of different variables that go into this. One of those variables is so with ICP, for example. You would also want to look at how it compares to other comparable things like, let's say, Amazon Web Services. So if I look at Amazon Web Services and the applications I use on AWS compared to ICP, well, at least on ICP, I have a decent vote in many of these applications if I choose to exercise it, right? 
And a lot of these different applications, the market cap is pretty small. So normies could organize together and have a decent say in the governance of many of these applications. Yes, Definity has the majority vote at the network level, but at the application level, it leaves open a lot of doors for normal people to work together to advocate for policies that make sense for them, that they want to see. And that's possible on ICP because they have governance at the network level and at the application level. So already, if we're just comparing this to the status quo, I have more of a say now on ICP than I do on Amazon Web Services. Looking at things in a vacuum and not relative to other comparable things is something that we've discussed many times on the channel. And it's always, you have to look at, at how it compares relatively to other comparable things. All right, and, and again, it, it's there is a spectrum here, all right? And maybe ICP starts off down in this general range, okay? And then over time, when it makes more sense, when the risk of somebody else taking the majority vote goes down, um, it makes sense to move closer to this end. But in my opinion, it's already more decentralized than Amazon Web Services because I have more of a say right now on ICP-based applications than I do on applications that are on AWS. So the moral high ground argument with decentralization, we've talked about this many times dating back, you know, 18 months, almost two years at this point. And, you know, just be able to identify when someone is trying to have a conversation in bad faith. And also, we just talked about false dichotomies with the SEC and crypto. Something is either centralized or decentralized. No nuance, and there's no context of the current versus the new. Um, and that's what I was just talking about with ICP and Amazon Web Services. But yeah, I mean, there this conversation gets painted with a broad brush in a very black and white manner more times than not, and they just blanketly label something as being centralized or decentralized in a vacuum, no context, no relative comparison to other things. It's just, this is centralized or that's decentralized and just goes on and on and on about it forever. And, you know, I just have no interest to listen to people who are virtue signaling about this. If you're virtue signaling about decentralization and centralization, you better have a strong track record of being front and center, informing as many people as possible. If you're not telling the truth about the big picture, what's going on here with this entire implementation process and all the corporations involved and all the central banks involved and all the, the large um, governments that are involved, if you're not telling the truth about all of this tech and the rollout and the timeline and how it's being used, but you're virtue signaling about decentralization, what the fuck are you doing? That, that's a great example of somebody who's missing the fucking point, or they're doing it with bad intentions. Because really, step one is public awareness needs to grow. All right? You can get to the decentralization, centralization conversation after public awareness grows, or you can do them both simultaneously. But having the decentralization, centralization conversation on a daily basis while you're not openly informing as many people as possible as to what's going on with all of this. So you're not contributing to public awareness growing. You're just skipping that step, okay? That, that You don't wanna touch that step. You just wanna skip right over that and you wanna go immediately into virtue signaling about decentralization. Get the fuck out of here. That, that's my general position on that, okay? Um, so anyways, those are my thoughts, guys. Uh, you might have differences of opinion. That's perfectly fine. I don't expect people to agree with everything that I say. I hope you don't agree with everything that I say. Um, but those are my thoughts. And if I missed any important points, which is entirely possible, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and that's it. So that's all I got. Take care. Not financial advice. Do your own research. Take care. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next video.